के बोल थिंकिंग दैट यमराज and you know everything was they were trying to treat him with the medicine 
antibiotics, antibiotics, and all the reports were coming that he is not responding to any medicine. For seven days he was in coma, and then they said that for some more time if he remains in coma one more day, then we will put him off the machine, and then he will die a natural cause of death. So his relatives were praying, said no, 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 we cannot allow our patient to die. So his son was a medical student, he was praying, his wife was praying, his sister was praying, his younger son, all of them were sitting and playing there. And as they were about to take him off the machine, he opened his eyes. Everyone's great surprise, he opened his eyes and he started talking. He said, as soon as I said, God, please save me, so I came out of my body. I saw actually my body lying down. And the first thing I started thinking is that so many times in an hospital, in an operation theater, I have declared a patient dead when the brain stopped functioning. And today I am seeing that I am still alive. That means somebody higher than the brain controls the body. And what is that? That is the consciousness. And then he describes that suddenly he saw the darkness, some different looking people, and then an angel came and took him to a higher place. He was flying with the angel to a place, and he was seeing there were cows who were grazing, nice fields, there were people who were talking in different language, speaking different things, wearing different types of clothes, eating different types of food. He said, I want to be here. This is the place I want to be. But the angel said, you cannot stay here. You have to perform lot of good activities to come here. Now it is the time to go back. He said, no, I don't want to go back. He said, no, you have to go back. And when he was coming back, he could hear the sound of the prayers made by all the family members. And then he entered the body. And he says that I am a neurosurgeon who did not believe so much in God, never believed in a life after death also. But after this experience, my life has completely changed. I visit, you know, temple of God very frequently. I go to church and I, I have become more and more believer of God. So this research, one another research which was done on near-death experiences and where around data was collected from almost 1000 patients, 1000 plus patients. And there was a typical pattern of reaction, what happened, the way they described their near-death experience. And what do they say is that whenever near death, as I explained to you, near-death means a person who is declared de dead because the heart has stopped functioning. And then suddenly they say that many of these patients that the, our entire this experience was very very crystal clear and this experience is very very real hmm? many of the doctors whom they described where they, sh uh, exp uh, they showed this experience the doctors were saying that the patients when they were describing this experience it was actually real what they were saying that that experience is so real that even after so many years we feel that it has happened just now and we felt that that was real, that was permanent and what we are living, our life is actually unreal and temporary. So that's the first thing that, that the consciousness is very very clear. The second part of that is that most of them they say that I came out of my body. Hmm? That I came out of my body, one patient was saying that I heard the two people were talking about me and I told them I am here. You know, you are talking about me, but they could not listen, they could not hear me. And then I saw that they were talking about my body. One Chinese man was telling that I met with an accident and I died on the spot. And my girlfriend, my sister, my mother, they are crying and my girlfriend is trying to beat my heart, you know, trying to slap on my heart. And she's crying and my sister is saying, he is gone, he is gone forever. He's saying, I am telling my girlfriend, no, I am here. You know, you know I am here, I am still alive. <laughs> but he said, she could not hear me. Hmm? Another patient was telling that, 
I was hearing that you know this people are talking about uh, somebody and they I heard my name so I wanted to tell them that I am here you know and then suddenly I saw that they were talking about another person and I came in closer to that person and actually I realized that was my body <laughs> so second thing is in the real experience they see they come out of their body an out of body experience is very very strong one cardiologist was telling that one of the patient you know, when they do this open heart surgeries at that time the entire the, there's a machine you know when they are working on the heart the entire body is working on a machine which is outside so he was telling that this patient remains unconscious for almost two days and when he becomes conscious the patient was exactly describing when the surgery was happening where I was standing where the anesthetist was standing what we were talking I say not only about that room in another room you know my personal room where whenever I am operating and some people call up then the nurse actually writes down the message and she sticks on the computer you know first message second message third message he told me about all the messages which was written in that room that means he's saying it is not possible he was lying in the operation theater how can he see what is happening in that room that means definitely he came out of his body and he was moving around hmm? the next thing they describe is out of out of body experience they say that the entire life goes like a flashback like a rewinding tape hmm? most of these patients say we saw our life right from childhood till now like a rewinding tape and whenever we give pain to others it stops for a few seconds we experience the pain whenever we give pleasure to others we felt the happiness so you came out of the body and then you are seeing your entire life like a flashback like a movie the entire tape is rewinded and you can see exactly whatever has happened and whenever you give pain to others you experience the pain many of the patients they describe this and after that they say that next thing we saw we went through a tunnel and we are waiting we are going very fast through that tunnel and the other end of the tunnel there is light and what is that light that light is very very beautiful we feel it is full of love full of supreme power compassion and that light was actually covering us you know wrapping us and we didn't want to we felt that this is at home I always want to be here I don't want to leave this place because this light is so good and the next thing they hear is go back huh? this is not the time you can be here and many of these patients argue with that sound no but we want to be here we have found this so divine uh, one patient she was in cesarean section when she underwent this near death experience so the light was telling you have a newborn child down you know you should go back he said no but I what I was looking for throughout my life is I am getting here why should I go back he said no but you have to go back and as soon as they accept that they have to go back said they enter their body and one of the patient was saying that I was feeling that I am so big I am so full of knowledge how can I enter this tiny body now he was not realizing when he came out of the body but when he was out of the body he was looking at the body and feeling how can I enter this body saying but somehow the thak a noise in you enter the body most of the patient the most amazing part of near death experiences is they say our life has completely changed after this experience we do not have any fear of death fear of death has completely gone and because that experience of giving pain to whenever you have given pain to others you experience that pain is that our relationship with the husband wife children parents completely change because you don't want to give any more pain to anybody some patients feel that 
because god has given me this extension i want to serve god i want to help others huh? some of the patients feel that because i am a tiny spark who is part of that light so i want to go back to that place so now i want to find out how can i go back to that place how can i go back to that light huh? some of the patients they start talking about yoga meditation astrology one american patient said i have to go to india now to find out <laughs> what should i do now <laughs> and one of the patient was saying that actually i realize that i am a small spark of that big light and i have to be connected to that light so all the spiritual practices we do is actually to awaken that small spark so i must perform lot of spiritual activities and i should become very very conscious of my surrounding so this is what a modern scientific research about near death experiences talks about what happens after death so what is the conclusion of this research that there is something higher than brain which controls the body and what is that thing that is the consciousness uh, and they also say there is a presence of soul because soul who is coming out of the body and experiencing thing also this research proves that your every action has a reaction if you perform good actions there are good reactions if you perform bad action there are bad reactions now let us understand what does our ancient vedic scriptures they talk about death hmm? in bhagavad gita there are so many shlokas uh, which explains about who are we uh, most of the time when we talk about who are we what do we say i am sonal i am sheetal uh, i am meena i am tina but are we actually this people or we are residing somebody in this body what do you say i hand or my hand ha huh? my hand i head or my head i body or my body my body so whose body is this there is a soul residing in this body and this body belongs to that soul now we have prabhupad gives a very famous example of car and driver what is the famous example of car and driver that as a car has four wheels to run we have two legs to run uh, car has horn we have a mouth to speak car has front light we have eyes to see but unless and until somebody sits in the driver seat of that car the car cannot function similarly our body cannot function till the time there is presence of soul many times when we say that a person is dead इन गुजराती भी से गुजरी गया चाली गया वारले हु वॉज गॉन द बॉडी इज राइट इन फ्रंट ऑफ यू समबडी हु वॉज गिविंग लाइफ टू दैट बॉडी एज गॉन सो भगवद गीता से इज देहीनो स्मिन यथा देह कौमारम यौवनम जरा तथा देहांतर प्राप्ति धीरस तत्र नमुयति इफ यू पुट योर पिक्चर्स राइट फ्रॉम चाइल्डहुड टिल नाउ do you look same you look different in every picture no right but still what do we say this is my picture and so body keeps on changing but the soul doesn't change similarly at the time of death the body can change to another body but soul remains same and that is why many of us even though we have not died in this life we feel scared of death do you feel sometimes scared of heights somebody sometimes feels scared of water hmm? somebody feels scared of fire why have you fallen down from a very height great height have you drowned in water still why do you feel scared because the mind has already captured the memories of previous lives in the previous lives how the way you have died those memories are still there in the subtle mind in subtle body and that is why we feel scared even in this life bhagavad gita also says where does the soul reside the soul resides in the region of heart 
and that's why many time when the patients have cardiac arrest or the open heart surgery these are the patients actually who experience near death or out of body experiences what is the size of the soul 1 10000 the tip of the hair so very very tiny huh? and a tiny ant or a big elephant the size of the soul remains same huh? it doesn't change and does each one of us have a soul yes and each one of us have a different soul so bhagavad gita explains this in great detail to us and the nature of the soul is sat chit ananda always blissful full of knowledge and eternal krishna also tells in bhagavad gita yam yam vapi smarana bhava whatever you think at the time of death that will be your next destination and krishna also says antakale cha mameva smarana muktva kalevaram if you think of me at the time of death you will come back to me janma karma cha me divyam evam yoveti tatvata tyaktva deham punarjanma naiti mameti su arjuna that one who understands my the you know my appearances and my leela uh, the reason of my appearance and my leela he doesn't have to come back again in this world so our scriptures tell us that this body is special because there is presence of soul and there is presence of something else besides soul that is parmatma hmm? anybody however beautiful the body is however famous the person is however great the scientist whether einstein newton huh, or whoever it is greatest personality in this planet as soon as they die as soon as that spark leaves the body what do we do either bury or burn hmm? till the time that spark is there that life is very important that personality is very important personality is very important but as soon as that spark is gone that same body is of no use so it is presence of the soul and presence of krishna as parmatma in that body which makes that body very very special there is a story in mahabharat that after the battlefield of kurukshetra was over krishna as arjuna krishna was driving the chariot of arjuna so krishna told arjuna please get down so arjuna said no my lord you get down first He said no no you get down so like obedient servant arjun got down and then krishna got down and as soon as krishna got down the entire chariot collapsed and became into powder and arjun was shocked he said my god how did this happen and krishna said because i was present during the war on this chariot so many arrows had attacked but because of my presence nothing happened to this chariot nothing happened to you Uh, but as soon as i got down of the chariot this chariot has collapsed so till the time the presence of soul and the presence of krishna is there this body has any meaning hmm? how much time we spend over this body nail art hair styles different shampoos huh? different makeup so many things how many hours and hours we spend over this body huh? but as soon as the person is dead even the closest relative says after 6 hours let us take the body out and you know when they burn the first thing which burns is the hair hmm? how many amount of shampoos and oils and conditioner we have spent over that head hair but everything vanishes so fast hmm? it is this body is actually gift of god it should be used in the service of god but if you use it only for the purpose of just decorating the body and not you know using it for the purpose which it is given then you will understand the time of death that you have wasted your time there is another story there was a king who had four queens his first queen was very very chaste very very nice but the king would not spend time with her he did not like her so much his second queen was very dear to him so he would spend so much time with her all the time giving her different gifts nice clothes nice makeup nice jewelry 
then the third queen she was very wise so whenever he needed any advice he would take from that queen and the fourth queen she came from a very big family so whenever king had to go to different functions to different royal kingdoms he would take her with so when the time of death came the king asked which of my queen will come with me so he did not like the number 1 queen so he didn't even ask her so he asked the number 2 queen he said i have always given you so many gifts will you come with me he said no i will not come then he asked the third number queen will you come he said i can come till some distance and then he asked the fourth queen saying i not only i will come as soon as you die i will get married to somebody else he was shocked and then he heard a small voice you know i will come with you queen i i will come with you king and whose voice was that that was the first queen and the first queen and he was shocked she was so thin she had no capa- you know no beauty no capacity to even walk so no but i will come with you so what does this story tell us that who is the number 2 queen it is our body we give so many gifts to this body nice clothes nice perfumes makeup jewelry we spend hours and hours and hours on this body but at the time of death she will come with us no she won't come with us then the next is your friends and relatives will they come with you they give you nice advice they are very happy in your happy times sad in your sad times but they can only come till the crematorium they cannot come who is the fourth queen who will get married to somebody else your wealth as soon as you die the wealth goes to the person who inherits the wealth and who is the first queen the first queen is actually the devotional service or whatever spiritual activities which we have done that is the only thing which we can come with us everything else will stay back nothing can come with us only spiritual activities can come with us all the devotional services all the services to god which we have performed through this body only that can come with us scriptures also explain and there is a very famous story of buddha that one mother when her son died she came to buddha and she said that please please you know make my son alive so lord buddha told her that you go you get me mustard seeds from any house where death has not occurred and she said yes i will get immediate as soon as you get that mustard seed i will uh, get your boy alive and he start she started going from house to house finding is there anybody is there any house where death has never occurred could she find the mustard seeds no she came back and she said that there is not a single house where death has not occurred so death can will occur can occur and always occur unknowingly knowingly giving without coming giving any information but it will definitely happen also there was a very famous story there was a parrot who was very scared of death so he heard from yamraj that very soon he is going to die so parrot decided that i will go so far away so far away he crossed seven oceans seven mountains and far off place in a mountain in a small cave he went inside and he started hiding himself but in when he went there what did he see yamraj standing there and yamraj was smiling she so said why are you smiling he said no when i told you that your death is going to be very soon i was thinking that you are going to die so far how will you reach to this place and your destiny was that that you will die crossing seven oceans seven mountains in this particular cave and i was thinking i have met you somewhere else how will you die here so whatever you do to avoid death you cannot avoid in medical world few years back there was tuberculosis and there was no cure for tuberculosis then finally they found cure for tuberculosis the next disease was cancer somehow that they got control over cancer the next disease was aids huh? so newer and newer diseases keep on coming 
nobody can avoid death but when a person who has spent his entire life talking about god thinking about god when death comes for that person it is like krishna or god himself has come in the form of death but a person who has spent the time without thinking about god he is very very scared of death because when death comes he doesn't know what will happen at the time of death krishna tells in bhagavad gita bhukta ram yagatapasam sarva loka maheshwaram that i am the well wisher of everyone and i am the most dear friend to everyone now when do you need the friend most when you are in the greatest need right when you have the greatest need you need need your friend no that my friend should come and help is there any thing greater need than at the time of death death is the time when you need somebody's help and krishna says i am your friend if you remember me i will come and i will protect you if you remember me i can actually protect your soul or i can if i like i can protect your body also i know one of the, our devotee uh, priya bandhu prabhu few years back there was a bomb blast in the year 2006 and he was in a train he entered from grand road and then he sat in one of the compartments in the first class compartment he went on a corner seat and then he was sitting and chanting he removed his beads and he was chanting hare krishna maha mantra and as usual devotees you know when they chant what happens sometimes they go to sleep so he went to sleep and the next thing he remembers a big blast and when he opened his eyes almost all his clothes had there were no clothes on his body only his banyan and few others you know everything was torn and all the people who were sitting next to him were all dead except him he had his beads in his hands his bead bag was also flown away hmm? because in the same place where he was sitting the other side of the compartment there was a bomb and there was a bomb blast so in his case actually krishna protected his body but what krishna protects krishna protects our consciousness hmm? krishna gives releases from our the illusion that we are this body and krishna gives us that eternal body with which we can enjoy with krishna in the spiritual world permanently hmm? that is what is krishna promising us that the time of death if you have taken shelter of me i will come and i will actually give you your eternal body there is another very nice story huh, from the scriptures where only one place where somebody could come back from the clutches of yamaraj and that is hiranyakashipu ravan uh, ravan did so much tapasya and asked for different different benediction i should not die of a demigod i should not die by this weapon but he thought monkeys and human beings are you know too inferior to even ask for and then lord ram appeared and hanuman ji appeared and destroyed ravan and hiranyakashipu made so many conditions i should not die here i should not die there i should not die like this not in the day not in the night not by a weapon not by a human being not by an animal he made so many conditions but krishna still came in the form of narsingh dev and killed him but in this particular story which is very very applicable to all the young girls uh, somebody actually died but because of her power he came back and this is a story of satyavan and savitri hmm? savitri was a princess and satyavan was a prince who actually lost everything and savitri wanted to marry only satyavan so when the marriage was fixed it was told that very soon satyavan will die so her parents told her that please don't get married so no no i want to marry him only and then she knew the exact date when he was going to die so she went with him in the forest and suddenly he was bitten by a snake and he died and yamraj was taking the soul of her husband away and savitri started following yamraj and yamraj said you cannot come behind me you know i am taking the soul of your husband away and she was very gentle she could she was very pure because she was very chaste 
Now we must understand for a woman, her chastity is very very important. Hmm? When we are chaste, we are we have purity. That purity actually gives us power. Now in case of men, when they practice brahmacharya, they get lot of spiritual strength. But in case of girls and women, when they are more pure and more chaste, that's the time they power lot of they get lot of spiritual strength. So Savitri had lot of spiritual power. That's how she could see Yamraj. And finally Yamraj was very pleased. So she said, I cannot give you your husband back, but ask any benediction. So what benediction she asked? The let me have hundred sons and stay in a palace of my, you know, my husband's uh, palace. And he said, Tathastu. And then he was going away. He said, how can I have hundred sons without my husband? You have to give my husband back. This is one time when a chaste woman got her husband back. We are not saying that you become chaste to get something like this, but purity is very, very important for girls. Hmm? Also, Krishna and Balram, they themselves got Sandipani Muni's children. Uh, when Sandipani Muni was their guru, and Sandipani Muni asked in Guru Dakshina that please get my, you know, the, he had few sons who were dead, saying, please get them back. And Krishna and Balram could got them back. Hmm? Srimad Bhagavatam explains two very beautiful pastimes. Uh, one is in sixth canto and one is the first canto. Uh, first canto is about Parikshit Maharaj. Who was Parikshit? Parikshit was actually son of Abhimanyu and Uttara. Uh, and Abhimanyu was son of Arjun and Subhadra. And so Abhimanyu was nephew of Krishna. So when Parikshit, he became the king after Yudhishthir Maharaj and the Pandavas left, he was ruling all over the world and he was very powerful. And one day when he went in the forest, he became very thirsty. So he went into the ashram of one Rishi and the Rishi was sitting in meditation. So he asked for water but the Rishi could not give water because he was in deep meditation. Somehow for a spur of a moment he became angry and there was a dead snake which he put around the Rishi. And when he was leaving, he was feeling very bad that why did I do this? And I am very soon going to get the reaction for this. And the son of the Rishi, Shringi, was playing somewhere. And as soon as he heard that my father has got this dead snake, immediately took water and he cursed the king. What was the curse? That you will die in seven days because of a, a bite of a takshaka snake. You put a snake around my father, now you die because of a bite of a takshaka Takshaka. And as soon as Parikshit Maharaj realized this, that he is going to die, what did he do? He started seeing his bank balance, huh? started deciding what will go to whom? No. He immediately went on the bank of Ganga. And all the sages from all over the planet came. Huh? All wanted to help him. And Shukadev Goswami was chosen. And Parikshit Maharaj asked very, very important three questions. What was the first question? What is the supreme occupation of human beings? What is the essence of all religions? And third and the most important and relevant question, what is the duty of a man who is about to die? <coughs> Sorry. And in reply to these three questions, Srimad Bhagavatam was spoken. 18,000 shlokas were spoken. And what was the conclusion? The duty of a man who is about to die should hear, chant and remember about Krishna. What do we do? Hear, remember and chant about Krishna. In Bhaktivedan hospital also any patient whenever they are dying, we have a protocol where there are people who are chanting for him, somebody is putting Ganga Jal, somebody is putting Tulsi, somebody is reading from Bhagavad Gita. And we engage all the relatives in doing all these activities. Because we know that at the time of death, if anybody remembers Krishna, Krishna makes his journey to the next life very, very easy. And the second pastime is in the sixth canto of Srimad Bhagavatam. This is about Ajamil. Hmm? Ajamil was a great Brahmana. In his young age, he was very, very pious. He would always serve his parents. He would go to the forest, get nice 
fruits and flowers and wood for the puja of the deities so one day when he went to the forest he saw a chandala and a prostitute in a very awkward position and when he saw that it stuck in his mind so when he came back home he had his wife but he was still thinking of that prostitute so shri radha gopinath ki he was still thinking about that prostitute and after when you keep on thinking about something what happens you get attracted hmm? right how do you get attracted to something by constantly thinking about that object so he became so attracted to her that after few days he got her in the house uh, his parents left his wife left and to keep a prostitute you have to give a lot of money so he sold off all his property and he was very attached to her because he wanted to keep her he started doing robbery and he became a robber from a brahmana he became a robber murderer he completely changed he had many children at the age of 80 he had a son somehow other of his good activities he named his son narayan and when the time of his death came he could see yamdutas coming to take him away so when he saw yamdutas he got very scared so when he got very scared he saw his 2 years old narayan playing there so they are shouting narayan narayan and yamdutas were trying to take his soul away but as soon as he spoke narayan vishnu dutas appeared and vishnu dutas told him stop he stopped the yamdutas now you cannot touch him now he is our property why because at the time of death unknowingly also he did not chant narayan's name he was chanting name of his son but unknowingly also he chanted the name of narayan so when yamdutas went to yamraj and he said are we are very surprised we thought you are the supreme most authority in this world somebody is checking us somebody is stopping us they are not allowing us to fulfill your order and at that time yamraj explains that whoever takes the name of lord ram vishnu krishna narayan the time of death you cannot touch them hmm? so krishna's name is very very powerful and that is why that when somebody is dying or somebody is dead what do we say ram naam satya uh, because the name of ram is very very powerful if you take the name of lord ram at the time of death if you remember krishna at the time of death krishna promises that i will come as your dear friend and i will take you back to back home back to god it so we must remember two things we must always remember that death will come and death is very very sure but most important than death is we must chant the holy names of the lord at the time of death and now many times people say yes yes i will do throughout my life whatever i want in a time of death i will chant uh, name of ram and narayan does it happen no so many times in the hospital we are trying to tell the patients please chant ek cigarette de do <sighs> ek bidi de do i want to do this biryani biryani my last desire is biryani why they don't want to take names of god because what is important is what you do throughout your life will actually come to help at the time of death huh? radhanath maharaj explains very nicely how many of you appear for exams so many of you right so at the time of exam only on the day of exam you start preparing you prepare much before much advance right you study you read books you join classes Uh, you take some uh, tuitions and then you are working very very hard uh, and then your results come similarly life is preparation and death is the final exam hmm? at the time of death whatever preparation you have done everything you that, that is only one answer at that time <laughs> you have to chant <laughs> you have to chant chant the names of lord krishna and if you don't chant again you have to come back again you have to study the same exam same paper same things so what is more important is the time which you have now in this time you should associate with people who are spiritually minded so that you become more spiritual 
most of the time if i ask you that what are the things which you can never live without what will be the list my mobile internet my girlfriend my boyfriend huh? list will be very big no right and we always want more and more and more i want more and we think happiness is directly proportionate to things which i possess the number of dresses i possess a number of picture facebook how many people are following me uh, happiness is directly proportionate to my mobile which i have which is the latest model happiness is not directly proportionate to that hmm? happiness is actually very very deep right within our heart uh, i would just end with a short story there was a person his father was very very rich so when his father died like as we so saw in the story of kanjus karodi mal when his father died he wanted to find out where my father has put all the wealth so his father had told that i have hidden all the wealth and you must find out where is the wealth so he started searching for that wealth he thought in this bank in this place in that place he kept on searching and his life went on and on and on like that and one day he also died so when he died they brought him to his ancestral house and they were digging the ground there to bury him and when they were digging the ground they found the wealth so where was the wealth wealth was in his own house and he was searching for it at so many other places similarly dear friends the spiritual wealth is right within us within our heart Uh, krishna is sitting as parmatma within our heart uh, and he is such a friend that whether you are in a body of a ant animal plant or a human being he keeps on coming with you every time for what to remind please come back to me please come back to me ha uh, mundaka upanishad explains that there are two birds sitting on the same tree one bird is busy eating different fruits and sometime he gets the sweet fruits then he thinks the next fruit also will be sweet so keep on trying different different fruits but sometime it is bitter sometime it is sour in between it is sweet so keep on trying and what is the other bird doing this waiting and watching this bird that what is this bird doing and what is he waiting for when will this bird turn and look at me so krishna is always waiting in your heart and today is very happy that all of you have come to temple and you are hearing about him Huh? and maybe you are trying to look towards him so if we see there is a birth date and there is a death death date and in between there is a dash huh? so what is important is how do you master that dash how do you live your life in such a way that the time of death you can remember krishna because the only truth is the name of the lord hmm? the name of the lord is the only truth because you can access god through his name hmm? key to the mystery of death is in the holy name hmm? when you chant the holy name you can cross across all the oceans of birth and death hmm? hare krishna thank you is there any question do you have any question Did you get scared? <laughs> yeah. So we will have now uh, we will spend our time chanting the names of Krishna and I want all of you to dance very nicely. I all of you like to dance? Mm? So we will dance and we will pray very nicely to Radha Gopal